Hey everyone, the last few videos I put out for DCS have all had gameplay footage in VR. They were all recorded in real time with no tracks or playback features. And the number one question I got was, how do you do that? Well, it's time to show you. Before we begin, my PC specs are an AMD 7900X3D CPU, 64 gigabytes of DDR5 6000 memory, and a 3090 GPU. Also, I do not record on the same PC that I game on. I have a second PC for that, so none of the CPU or GPU time is shared with OBS. So when I first started trying to figure out how to record VR gameplay in DCS, I had a few things in mind. I wanted the video to not be jittery, it needed to be clean, sharp, and readable, and it needed to be relatively easy to do. For reducing jitter, the number one thing I found is to keep your FPS at 60 or above. The more FPS, the less noticeable the jitter. Since I'm recording at 60 FPS, the goal is to maintain 60 also in VR at all times to reduce this movement artifact. For clean and sharp, the best thing we can try to do is match our DCS output resolution provided by the DCS mirror with the resolution output from OBS. This needs to have as close as possible to a one-to-one -one pixel alignment ratio. Now it's important to know that in the VR settings for DCS, under the VR mirror options, there are two checkboxes. The first is use DCS system resolution and the second is crop to rectangle. With both these settings turned on, it effectively does the stretching for us. We do not need to do it ourselves in OBS. However, under the hood, because it is stretching it for us, the same pixel ratio issue still exists. The last thing is for it being easy. What I mean by this is I don't want to install other mods like VR shader mod or external OBS mods and mess with like 10 to 20 different settings external to DCS like in the NVIDIA control panel or OpenXR. If it's just a few things here and there, that's fine, but I'm really looking for the easiest path here. Now I'm going to work a little bit backwards here, but it should make sense in the end. First, let's talk about OBS. So given our output resolution of 1440p, the next step is to calculate the VR resolution that we need so that when we scale the mirror from DCS, we still maintain a one-to-one -one pixel ratio. Since there are a lot of different HMDs out there and not everyone is recording at 1440p, I made a simple spreadsheet that you can use to do the math for you. The first step you're gonna to wanna to do after you follow the link in the description below to the spreadsheet is to copy it. To do this, you're gonna to go to File, and you're going to click make a copy. This is going to stick a copy of the calculator in your own Google Drive. From here, you can go ahead and edit your copy and input the proper values to get the calculation you need. Simply type in the per eye resolution of your HMD. If you don't know this, you can surely look it up on Google. Then type the desired vertical resolution. This is the height of the output resolution we want in OBS. Then take note of the required OpenXR resolution, the DCS PD value, or the SteamVR super sampling percentage. You're only gonna need one of these depending on the steps to follow. If you are not using the OpenXR toolkit and you do not have SteamVR, you can use the DCS pixel density value to set your pixel density in DCS. If the value has a hundredths decimal, you will need to input it manually into the options Lua. You can find this in Saved Games, DCS, Config, Options Lua. Look for the pixel density field under VR and type the value in from the calculator. If you're not using the OpenXR toolkit and you have Steam VR, set the super sampling slider for DCS to the value found on the calculator. If you are using the OpenXR toolkit, regardless of all other VR apps, you want to do the following. Start DCS, press the hotkey to bring up the OpenXR toolkit. The default binding is Control F2. 
navigate to the system tab, then down to display resolution per eye and use the left and right bindings to change the value so that it closely matches the value from the calculator. By default, you can change the values faster by holding the shift key. Then wait for the menu to close or close it manually by navigating to exit. Let's take a look at field of view trim. Now this is a setting that doesn't work on all HMDs. If you aren't using the OpenXR toolkit, you can also skip this section. Because this setting affects HMDs differently, feel free to give it a try, but if it doesn't work properly or you see the trim inside your HMD, don't use it. Basically the idea here is to reduce the field of view by a small percentage to gain a couple of extra FPS back. Typically your HMD has a field of view that it renders to but the render field of view is not the same as the visible field of view. The reason for this is due to the padding that is typically between the lenses and your eyes. This pushes your head farther away from the screens and thus reduces the field of view that you actually see. The other thing this does is it reduces the field of view you see on the DCS mirror, which typically brings the view more centered and comparable to 2D. To change the field of view, you're going to want to press the hotkey again to open up the toolkit, navigate to the system tab, then down to field of view and change the value to advanced. Each of these settings works as follows. Up reduces the field of view from the top, down reduces it from the bottom, left left is the left side of the left eye, and left right would be the right side of the left eye. Counter to this, right left is the left side of the right eye and right right is the right side of the right eye. Now, depending on which eye is displayed in your desktop, you wanna choose the proper left or right settings to adjust. For me, I am displaying the right eye. So I change right left and right right values. What I'm looking for is to reduce the amount of field of view on the right side of the right eye. This will slowly reduce the excess visibility and bring the cockpit more centered in my desktop mirror field of view. So I reduce this value until I see one of two possible things. Either the cockpit appears to be centered in the mirror, or I can start to see the reduction of the right side field of view in the HMD. After changing this value, you will notice that the desktop mirror appears to be stretched. To fix this, reduce the top and bottom evenly until it's no longer stretched, or you see the change in field of view in the HMD. If you see the change in field of view, but the mirror still appears to be stretched, simply increase the value of the right side again until it appears correctly. Now, I know that's super complicated, but give it a try, check it out, and if you have any questions, hop in my Discord. The link should be below and I can help you out. Again, this is also not for everyone. Some HMDs like the MetaQuest Pro actually distort the image inside the HMD. So if that happens to you, set everything back to 100 and move on to the next chapter. If you have an NVIDIA card, this next bit is for you. Otherwise, you can skip to the next chapter. Now, even for NVIDIA users, this part isn't necessary, but we are using VR and we wanna squeeze every bit of performance out of DCS that we can. And in my opinion, there's a couple of options that matter for that. So first open up the NVIDIA control panel, then go to manage 3D settings, click on program settings, find digital combat simulator black shark in the program dropdown. Once selected, scroll down to low latency mode and change it to ultra. Low latency mode tries to reduce the render cues on the GPU at a driver level which means that this setting should help us in some cases where you are GPU bound. Keep in mind that the making of this video, Eagle Dynamics is currently in the process of trying to upgrade DCS to Vulkan instead of DirectX. So if you're watching this at a later date, this setting may not work anymore. The second and final thing you're gonna to wanna to do is scroll down to power management mode and choose prefer max performance. This just ensures that we don't have any unexpected dips in FPS while we're playing. Okay, we're almost there for the last bit. DCS settings. Now, I really can't help you determine what exact settings you need to get 60 plus FPS in DCS in VR. If I did that, this video would be just completely too long and there are so many combinations of HMDs and hardware that it's really hard for me to tell you exactly what you need to do in your system to achieve 60 FPS in VR. You will need to figure out the best settings for you to obtain 60 plus frames per second. What I can show you is my settings and that shadows, visibility range, resolution of cockpit displays, 
anti-aliasing, screen space ambient occlusion, or SSAO, and raindrops are some of the biggest contributors to low FPS performance. So focusing on these settings as a baseline for clarity will help a lot. Now the only other setting you're going to make sure you want to have selected is on the VR tab. You're going to want to make sure you have Use DCS System Resolution and Crop to Rectangle selected. Back when multi-threading came out, I made a spreadsheet to track the performance of each individual setting on two different PCs and I'm in the process of updating it for the new settings. Hopefully I can get a follow-up video with those settings out to you and that will help you make a more informed decision with DCS settings in the future. Now, if you've followed all these steps and you can still maintain 60 FPS, you should be able to record VR footage in real time. Record if you have any questions or just want to say hi. Like I said earlier, I hope to do a more in-depth settings video with uh, the information that I have. So uh, go ahead and smash that like button and subscribe so you get notifications of that video and I will catch you guys next time.